हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू ऑनलाइन लर्निंग क्लासेस स्टैंडर्ड सेवेंथ सब्जेक्ट इज साइंस द चैप्टर नंबर इज वन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड एडाप्टेशन एंड क्लासिफिकेशन लेट्स रिकॉल व्हाट वी हैव लर्न इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी लर्न अबाउट different types of adaptation in plants related to this some work also given to you to complete it at home which you must have definitely completed now today we are going to learn the following important points the points are adaptation in animals darwin theory of evolution classification of living organisms binomial nomenclature by karl linnaeus let's learn each of these in detail first one is adaptation in animal we will see adaptation in aquatic animals the aquatic animals show modified structure of body tapering spindle shaped body with scales and fins for swimming respiration by gills air bladders within the body for floating please children see this picture with this picture you will understand how they are taking breathing and how how they are floating in the water now next topic is now related to this topic i am going to ask you one more question why the fishes have gills instead of nose fishes are aquatic animals they can breathe oxygen only that is dissolved in water the gills help in absorbing oxygen from water the nose cannot be any function for aquatic fish and hence the fishes have gills instead of nose adaptation in amphibian frog is an amphibian it inhabit both land and water being a true amphibian it can breathe in water with the help of skin and when on land it breathes with nose and lungs duck is a bird it cannot take oxygen dissolved in water it breathes only with the help of lungs duck is not an amphibian but is amphibious there are web toes in frog and duck oars like leg both of these help in swimming waxy coating on the feathers help in quick drying of water in water birds like duck etc now next topic is adaptation in forest and grassland in forest and grassland animal we will see carnivorous animal and herbivorous animal let we discuss first carnivorous animal carnivorous animals legs are strong with sharp claws silent walker during capturing the prey eyes front of head knees eye side to spot the prey from a long distant teeth are pointed and canines teeth ears are small for example tiger lion etc now we will see 
herbivorous animal herbivorous animals legs are long tapering legs with strong hooves they are running fast and leaping fast eyes are below the forehead on either side of the head teeth are strong molars eyes are ears are long and freely moving ears for example deer antelope with this diagram you can understand how is the deer now we will move to next topic the topic is adaptation in desert animals let we see in detail scarcity of water has resulted into adaptations in the body of animals burrowing in deep earth remaining dormant at day time and active at night time now characteristic we will see of animal now characteristic in camel long legs with flat and cushioned soles folds of skin over the nostrils long and thick eyelashes thick skin to conserve water in the body for example rat snake spider etc in the desert now see this picture in this picture we are seeing camel rat spider in desert related to this topic now i am going to ask you question why is the camel called the ship of the desert the answer is the skin of a camel is thick the legs are long with cushioned soles this is a fold of skin for protection of nostrils the eyelashes are long and thick and thus they protect the eyes fat is stored in its hump due to which it can survive for a long time without water due to all of such adaptations camel becomes most suitable to walk in the desert thus it is used as a means of transport and is called ship of the desert now we will move to next topic the topic is adaptation in animals of snowy regions we will see now snowy region animals long thick hair on the skin white or silver color body color now examples are polar bear white fox siberian husk, husk dog etc now see the picture in this picture you will see all these anim animals animals are polar bear siberian husk dog snow leopard etc next is adaptation in aerial animals let's see adaptation in aerial animals adaptation in birds spindle shaped body of birds that minimize the resistance of air while flying feathers covering the body four legs modified into wings air sacs in the body to increase bounce 
हेलो बोन्स मेकिंग बॉडी लाइट इन वेट एंड एडाप्टेड फॉर फ्लाइंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल ईगल प्लीज सी दिस पिक्चर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस पिक्चर नाउ वी विल सी एडाप्टेशन इन इंसेक्ट्स लाइट वेट एंड टैपरिंग बॉडी टू पेयर्स ऑफ विंग्स फॉर फ्लाइंग सिक्स थिक लाइक walking legs now adaptation in bat thin fold of skin called patiglium between them four legs and hind legs light weight and ability to hang now adaptation in reptiles snakes creep with the help of scales on their skin some reptiles use their muscles for creeping skin and sole of feet are specially modified for creeping mode for example lizard snakes etc adaptation for food in animals animals are either herbivores and carnivores few are omnivores now next point is according to their feeding there are some special adaptation no adaptation for blending with the surrounding means that animals are not able to see properly now let we see blending the colors with those of the surroundings is also an adaptation for example lizards and grasshoppers show complete blending with the surrounding and thus cannot be easily spotted now we will see darwin's theory of evolution charles darwin as a well known evolutionary biologist after observation of many plants and animal species he suggest theory of natural selection he discovered two principle first one is survival of fittest now survival of fittest mean those animals which are best adapted to a changing environment are likely to survive this is called the theory of survival of the fittest this is darwin's first principle now second principle is theory of natural selection if an organism is born with a few beneficial characteristics and it's able to survive this change is presented in the next generation this is darwin's second principle with this figure you will easily understand how second darwin theory is working before going to next topic i would like to ask you one question which are the criteria used for classification of plants and animals answer is plants are classified according to height shape of stems period of life cycle whether they are flowering plants or non flowering plants and their habitat animals are classified according to cell structure vertebral column 
method of reproduction and habitat our topic is classification of living organisms it is necessary to classify the living organisms or living things because it is difficult to study and remember all the diverse organisms in this world different scientist have used different criteria and give the method of classification now hierarchy of classification classification starts with kingdom animalia or kingdom plantia then depending upon basic similarities and difference there further groups and subgroups are formed this is known as hierarchy of classification now we will see what classification they made kingdom division class order family genes and species are the sequence of the classification system now see the figure hierarchy of classification first one is kingdom second is phylum or division third is class fourth is order fifth is family sixth is genes and species now we will see binomial nomenclature by karl linnean it consists of two parts the first part is genes and second is species as per guideline of the international code of nomenclature we will see in detail now now we will see binomial nomenclature by karl linnaeus binomial nomenclature is used to identify each organism this method was suggested by karl linnaeus every living organism has given uniform name throughout the world this is called scientific name scientific name consist of two parts the first part is genes and the second part is species as per the guidelines of the international code of nomenclature every organism has a binomial name only organisms belonging to the same species can produce an offspring all the organisms belonging to the same species may have difference in color height habitats and habits but still they can reproduce among themselves and from offspring like themselves lastly we will see world frog protection days is observed on 29th april this is for creating awareness about conservation of frogs according to wildlife protection act killing or harming frogs is prohibited 
now children related to topic i will going to ask you question which adaptations should you have to enable you to live permanently in the polar region the answer is in order to permanently inhabit in the polar region the body should be adapted to cold temperature there should be thick layer of fat and thick skin to protect the body the ability to regulate body temperature should be extremely good for the survival one more question now see listen why the fishes have gills instead of nose the answer is fishes are aquatic animals they can breathe oxygen only that is dissolved in water these gills help in absorbing oxygen from water the nose cannot be of any function for aquatic fish and hence the fishes have gills instead of nose children whatever question i am asking that all question you will write down in your notebook okay thank you children